Thank you, Zeev. Good afternoon. I am a uh, brain surgeon who's been studying inflammation for 30 years. It's an unusual combination. I was five years old when my mother died of a brain tumor. 35 years later, now a 40-year-old neurosurgeon, I was working in the lab fascinated, still, as I was as a five-year-old, by the complexities of the brain and how trillions of connections between individual neurons could make up not only what we think, who we are, how we move, but also had the primary job of keeping balance in all of the body's organs all day long, awake or asleep. You don't have to think about when your cell phone rings upstairs. You don't have to think about coordinating your respiration and your blood sugar and your heart rate. You jump up, run up the stairs, answer your cell phone, and your brain takes care of all of your organs in the background. So it was, it was with some, perhaps, preparation of studying neuroscience and inflammation in the laboratory, but primarily by accident, that my colleagues and I discovered that in addition to controlling your heart rate, your pancreas, your insulin, your lungs, reflex circuits from the brain also control the immune system. And this came as a huge surprise, a big enough surprise to be put on the cover story of last month's Scientific American. What we discovered is that if you can map these circuits, you can use the electrical activity of these brain circuits to turn off inflammation. So rather than taking potentially expensive, potentially toxic, potentially ineffective drugs to block inflammation, we can develop chips to stimulate specific nerves to control inflammation safely, specifically, and effectively. And so that's my whole talk. I'll go through some slides to give you the background of why I believe that's true. And to try to convince you that today is the time, not 10 years from now. This is not future, future science I'm talking about. This is happening now. And now is the opportunity to invest in this here in New York as a hub for developing what we call bioelectronic medicine. And I'll, I'll explain that to you. But before I get to that, you have to understand a little bit about in inflammation. So in the center of the slide is a word called cytokines. Cytokines are molecules made by the immune system, and it produces Cytokines actually produce inflammation. If you watch football on Sunday afternoons or golf tournaments, you've seen Phil Mickelson advertising Remicade for his rheumatoid arthritis. That's a, a problem of, in, of inflammation. And the problem occurs when cytokines, in this case TNF, is overproduced by the body's immune system. So if you overproduce insulin, you have low blood sugar. If you underproduce insulin, you have diabetes. If you overproduce TNF, you have inflammation or IL-1 or IL-6. That inflammation can be severe enough to cause disease. Now, the current drug industry for drugs targeting cytokines, IL-1, IL-6, and TNF, exceeds $50 billion a year. It's a relatively new industry. It, uh, the first drugs were approved in 1998. So it's a growing industry. It's already 5% of the total pharmaceutical market in the world. But these drugs are artificial. We make monoclonal antibodies to block these cytokines, and we administer them systemically. That's not how evolution worked. Evolution evolved a nerve-based mechanism to control these cytokines, and that's what we discovered. We discovered a way to, to use nerves to control the balance between health and disease by nerves regulating the production of cytokines. And um, sort of summarizing 15 years of work in one slide is difficult, but what you see in this slide is that signals originating in the brain stem, at the base of the brain, travel down a nerve called the vagus nerve. Now, much of the infl inflammation problem, much of the cytokines that are produced are produced in the spleen. So we mapped a particular circuit to the spleen, and we followed electrical signals by stimulating the vagus nerve in the neck and in animals and following it down to the spleen where we could actually watch the signals in the spleen turn off the TNF being made in the spleen by specific cells. And you can see a picture of one here. So this is a paper from my colleague Mauricio Rosas and Peter Olofsson that we published in Science a couple years ago. And the red line is a nerve ending. And that nerve ending is in the spleen. And I know that the electrical information 
contained in this nerve ending originates in the brain stem and travels through the neck and the chest to the spleen. And we can stimulate that red nerve by putting an electrode anywhere along that pathway. The cell is green because it's making acetylcholine. It's making a neurotransmitter. So that's a T cell, a, a white blood cell. And when the signal comes along the nerve to hit the T cell, the T cell makes acetylcholine. The acetylcholine turns off the TNF. And, and this is in a mouse, and we've done it now in people. So this is Morella. This is a patient that was found by the New York Times last year who had participated in a trial of a company that I co-founded called Setpoint. The, the, the trial was run by Paul Peter Tack, a leading rheumatologist in the world. Uh, Morella had arthritis for 16 years. She had failed steroids, methotrexate, and five biologic agents, five TNFs and IL-1s and IL-6s. She couldn't pick up a pencil, and within a year of implanting a device in her neck to stimulate the pathway I just described, she's now riding her bicycle to the Dutch coast, a 20-mile round trip. After the implant, I started to do things I hadn't done in years, like taking long walks or just putting on clothes in the morning without help. I was ecstatic. When they told me about the surgery, I was a bit worried, because what if something went wrong? I had to think about whether it was worth it. But it was worth it. I got my life back. This is the future. This, this is treatment with an off-the-shelf device. You can see the scar on her left breast. But in the future, and the devices being developed by Setpoint and others, we'll be talking about very, very small devices, devices the size of the multivitamin you may have taken this morning that'll be implanted on nerves to replace a drug that costs $50,000 a year, works in half the patients, and has a black box warning. We don't know of any side effects from stimulating specific nerve endings. If you look at the opportunity, the opportunity is to to, to do what I just showed you for other diseases. What I just showed you is we have to build the maps. It's not sufficient to make a really cool device, stick it in a person, and turn it on to see what happens. You have to, what is this? Uh, those of you who are laughing know that that's the state of the art in some places. The opportunity is to map these circuits to the pancreas for diabetes and cancer, to the kidneys for chronic kidney failure, to the bladder for irritable bladder syndrome, and around the circle, tuberculosis, celiac disease, irritable bowel disease, irritable, uh, inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bladder syndrome, coronary artery disease, hypertension, and other autoimmune and autoinflammatory diseases. The opportunity here is to go after the remaining unsolved diseases of the world using knowledge based on reflex neural circuits that can be targeted with specific devices designed to do that job, to replace drugs. The technology is available. This is a slide from a consortium being led by GSK. There are electrical, optical, and electromagnetic and ultrasonic methods of targeting nerves inside the body and outside the body. If you think of a nerve as a transatlantic telephone cable containing, in the case of the vagus nerve, 80 to 100,000 fibers, we're not interested in the whole 100,000 fibers. We're interested in a couple hundred or a couple thousand. And those can be targeted with specific devices that can read and write on those nerves to modulate disease. And that's the technology that's being developed now, but we need the maps. The key to, the, to, to, to success is going to be an active partnership of a growing ecosystem in academics, government, and industry. Currently, this is about a $400 million or $500 million ecosystem. The NIH has committed $248 million, GSK on the order of $50 million, DARPA upwards of $50 million, Covidian and Boston Scientific uh, and JSK are invested in Setpoint. And we at the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research here in New York are committed to building a new center for bioelectronic medicine. And we hope to be raising $350 million in the next year or so to announce this. The center has as its core the place where neuroscience and biology intersect with molecular medicine and electronics and computing. There's a lot of places that have two of these three, but there's no place in the world specifically focused on bringing these three together, which is what we plan to do. We are very excited about this. We see this as a tremendous opportunity to bring together expertise that will be needed across this uh, platform. It's not just about the nerves. It's not just about the devices. There's significant implications for healthcare IT, communications, and obviously, the role for Big Pharma is clear. Big Pharma is not in the business of making pills. They're in the business of making therapies. 
So we're very optimistic that the time has come and we are looking to seize the moment now to build this here. Thank you.